thank you very much for watching our session named Taxation of Digital Financial Services in Africa. Can we avoid harming financial inclusion? I am Awe Juf and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at GICTD. I'm happy to welcome four panelists from three African countries implementing a tax specific to GFS, Ghana, Cameroon, and Uganda. But let me first introduce our panelists. Alex Mohem Kombat is Assistant Commissioner of Research and Policy at the Ghana Revenue Authority. Welcome, Dr. Kombat. Ruth Taknet and Alphonse Noah are Maître de Conférence en Sciences Économiques at the Université de Limoges in France. Bienvenue. Regina Navuga is a um, Program Coordinator for the Program uh, Financing for Development at the Southern and Eastern Africa Trade Information in Uganda. Welcome. So thank you very much to all for joining this conversation on how taxes on GFS could arm financial inclusion in Africa, bringing interesting cases of Ghana, Cameroon and Uganda. So before starting the conversation, let me set up the context. As you know, African countries are more and more targeting GFS to increase tax revenue. However, the positive impact of mobile money on financial inclusion and most vulnerable strata brings the important question on whether African countries can tax GFS without arming financial inclusion. On this map from the ICTD GFS tax map website, we can see that no less than 13 sub-Saharan African countries are applying a tax to GFS. These instruments can be applied to values, fees, or operator turnover and have different designs. But what they have in common is that they are usually transferred to the final consumer and can change the way people use GFS. We also remark protests and general disagreement of populations that could also impact their behavior. More information on the design of these taxes in Africa can be found on the DFS tax map. But today, we will talk about the potential impact of these taxes on financial inclusion. I took this image from uh, the DFS tax map to show more details about Kenya. Kenya is the first country implementing a tax on transfer fees. Our work um, on the country showed that the tax did not really impact financial inclusion at the macro level, but when we use survey data, uh, allowing to analyze each type of transaction, we find that affected transactions have been negatively impacted compared to non-affected transactions. However, uh, the Kenya case is a little bit different because it's the only country applying uniquely a tax on fees. So the Kenya case could be different from other African countries' experience. And that's what we will discuss with our panelists today. To start the conversation, let me first bring uh, the Ghana case. Ghana has a tax on transfer value since May 2022, as shown on this slide. Uh, Dr. Combat, could you tell us more about the Ghana context and more specifically the way that population reacted and agreed to the tax? Some studies showed a general disagreement of the population. Did this disagreement result in an actual behavioral change from the population? Ghana had a population of about 30.1 million in 2021. And uh, in terms of uh, mobile uh, money accounts holders, they were about 18 million. And aside, this, the total value of transactions increased from 571.8 million Ghana cities in 2020 to about 978.32 billion in 2021. So based on this, uh, on paragraph 310 uh, of the national budget, government announced the introduction of uh, the e-levy. The budget stated that the rate was supposed to be 1.7%. Unfortunately, when the bill was submitted to budget, it was uh, opposed. So the 1.75 was outrightly rejected. And so uh, the rate was reduced to about 1.5%. Uh, and so eventually the bill was passed and then the implementation actually started. That was uh, on 1st May. Now the expected revenue from this levy was about 6.9 million Ghana uh, cities. Unfortunately, according to the Afrometer Balometer study, uh, majority of Ghanaians, about three-fourths of Ghanaians disapproved of the levy, including 67% who strongly disapproved uh, the policy. So only two in 10 endorsed actually the new tax. So that is to tell you that Ghanaians 
actually did not like the policy. They disapproved of it. I will now uh, jump to the Cameroon case. Um, the Cameroon tax is fixed at 0.2%, which is much less than the Ghana uh, tax rate. However, it applies to money transfers and withdrawals, while the Ghana e-levy only applies to transfers. Dr. Uh, Noah, you and Dr. Takneng are currently working on the impact of the Cameroon tax on mobile money agents' uptake. Uh, we all know that agents are very important for the market structure since they facilitate transactions. Could you tell us more about how the tax has been welcomed by mobile money agents and how they have adjusted their behavior to cope with the tax? Indeed, we are currently working on the impact of the 0.2% tax on mobile money transaction in Cameroon effective um, since January 2022 on mobile money agents profitability and business strategy. And this tax has received a negative feedback um, from clients and agents, and he has induced um, concern about his potential um, adverse in impact on financial inclusion. Uh, regarding agents uh, specifically, uh, our survey of uh, 800 active agents uh, conduct 30 months after introducing um, the tax revealed that uh, the agents are a negative opinion, as you can see uh, on this um, uh, workload. And this is because uh, this new tax has uh, the adverse impact on their customer and also on their uh, commissions. Uh, so agents um, now need to carry more um, more transactions to earn uh, the same profit compared to the period um, before the tax. Uh, regarding uh, the question about uh, the agent's response to the tax, our survey indicated that um, the most agents uh, had not changed how they conduct uh, their business, uh, as you can see on this figure. Uh, the survey also revealed that nearly 50% of um, agents in Yaoundé have expanded uh, uh, their business by increasing uh, capital or liquidity to serve a large number of uh, customers. Another important point is that um, some agents ask uh, customers to pay an extra non-regulatory non fees uh, per transaction. And this is a uh, more pre uh, predominant um, in areas outside Yaoundé, including <coughs> rural areas, where um, around 17% uh, of Asians were adopting uh, this strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Noah, uh, for this answer. I will now invite Regina to tell us more about the Uganda case. Uganda has a very special tax design combining a tax on fees and a tax on transaction values, as shown by this screenshot from the GFS tax map. After a few months of application, the tax has been cancelled for receiving and payments and is now only applied to withdrawals. This is a very particular context. Could you tell us more about general agreements and behavioral changes after the first application? but also the modification of the policy. This is the sixth year since mobile money tax was introduced in Uganda. That is financial 2018-2019. Back then, two contentious taxes were proposed. Over the top tax, commonly known as the social media tax, and then mobile money tax. Today, I'll focus on the mobile money tax. One of the reasons floated by government was the need to tax the informal sector. Now, citizens oppose the tax, CSOs including the tax excellence of Uganda, mobile money vendors, as well as other citizens. We presented petitions to parliament, open letters, media engagements, with a need to all, with a call to drop the tax. The key to note is uh, the fact that citizens were more conscious about the proposed tax and uh, the reason as to why they engaged more in the tax debate. Why? Because they felt that the mobile money tax was uh, going to impact on them more directly. The measure was welcomed by some of the um, by the citizens, and we noted that because of the pressure that the citizens had uh, put on government, government bowed to the pressure and reduced the rate from one percent, that is from receiving, sending, and withdrawing to zero point five tax on cash withdrawals only. So we still believe that. To government, mobile money tax is a cash cow because for them, they can easily get the revenue. However, 
to the citizens year in and year out, they still feel the burden of paying the mobile money tax. This year, we also saw that our government was proposing to expand the excise duty to cover the digital financial services. However, this was dropped by Parliament. I would like to follow up with Dr. Combat on the Ghana case again. Um, so the Ghana e-levy has been announced at 1.75%, then applied at 1.5% in May 2022. And in January uh, 2023, the Ghanaian government decreased the rate from 1.5 to 1%, with the main objective of increasing tax revenue by increasing usage. So after nine months of application, did the new tax rate result in a better acceptance of the tax compared to the first period of application? The government of Ghana in its 2023 budget statement, let's say paragraph 221, announced a reduction in the headline rate from 1.5% to 1%. So you are perfectly right. So subsequently, under Electronic Transfer Levy Amendment Act, that is uh, Act uh, 2023, that is Act 1089 was passed. And the uh, implementation actually started on January 12th. 2023. Uh, so I want to look at it from two fronts. So the first front will be in terms of total mobile money transactions reported on the platform. So when you look at um, uh, January 2023, so the, we had 38% of the volume of the transactions of the total money, mobile money transactions that was actually reported on the common platform. Now, by February, it increased to about 40%. And currently, as we speak, it's about 60%. So that is to tell you that reduction in the rate has actually increased mobile money transactions. So as people were crying for the reduction, I think it has yielded uh, some uh, fruits. Now, in terms of the revenue uh, front, when you look at uh, the performance from January to uh, August, and this also tells you that there has been uh, uh, an improvement from January to August in terms of revenue that uh, we, we, we actually earn. So when you compare this to the previous year on 1st May up to December, when you compare the revenue, you could see that from January to August 2023 is far, I mean, higher than May to December 2022. So that is to tell you that the rate has actually, the reduction in the rate has actually played a significant role in terms of acceptability. So people have begun to accept the policy now. Interesting to see that the policy change um, resulted actually in more acceptance uh, of the tax. Um, Dr. Takning, based on your research, could you tell us more about the actual impact of the Cameroon tax on mobile money agents? And more importantly, which kind of agents have been more or less impacted? And what could you say about the equity of the tax? As reiterated to a while ago by my co-author, Dr. Noah, our research focuses on the impact of the tax on mobile money transactions, on agents' profitability and business strategies in Cameroon. As agents mainly rely on commissions from mobile money transactions to earn profits, the tax, which increases transaction costs, could render the mobile money business less profitable and less financially viable. To carry out our investigation, we analyzed the commissions and transactions of over 9,000 agents in the center region of Cameroon before and after the implementation of the tax. Our identification strategy relies on the heterogeneity of agent sensitivity to the tax. We find um, empirical evidence showing that the tax is indeed hurting agents' profitability. Its adverse effect is not, however, uniform across agents. The agents more negatively impacted by the tax are those operating in the capital, which is Yaoundé, and in areas with a large presence of mobile money agents, particularly those that are underserved by formal financial institutions such as banks and are far from remittance agencies. This suggests that the tax creates a downward pressure on agents' profits, especially where agent competition is high. Our results um, also show significant differences in agents' business strategies after the mobile money tax implementation. 
while more tax sensitive agents are more likely to expand their mobile money business, particularly by increasing capital, less tax sensitive ones have a higher likelihood of charging additional fees to their clients. I will go back to the Uganda case. Uh, so recent research from my colleague Adrian Lees showed a poor tax policy process and a low integration of stakeholders in the tax policy process. We also um, see on this slide from a GFS tax map that the policy has been changed many times, which shows a sort of uncertainty from the government. Do you think that a better implication of stakeholders would make a difference and maybe make the tax more accepted by the population? To a large extent, yes, it is human nature to resist what you don't know. However, if you have been engaged right from the start in the process and your views are shared in time, as well as get feedback, you can easily welcome some of the, um, the proposals that have been provided by government. Currently in Uganda, few stakeholders are consulted. At least we are lucky that the Tax Test Alliance that Uganda, the city in Uganda coordinates is part of this process. However, we need to see more citizens, more groups uh, engaged in the tax matters, the budget process, and their views as well as perspectives, if they are discussed and uh, discussed by government, but better still considered uh, if they are good. In terms of acceptability, um, people know that governments need funds to finance social services, and they are increasingly accepting that other sources of financing are not sustainable, like debt. So we believe that once citizens are on board and they are willing to pay taxes, um, provide alternatives to government where the money can come from, um, they are more, you can better see change going forward. But most importantly, um, we want to see that um, government delivers on the promises, the plans that have been made, the priorities, and people have to see themselves in those plans. They need to see where the taxes are going at the end of the day, where the taxes are put to good use, and their needs and priorities are being at the center of all these discussions and implementation. For us, we believe that it is not fair to engage citizens all the time and not put their views into consideration. So we want to see that meaningful participation. To conclude our session, I will give one minute to each of our panelists to give us one key policy recommendation that they think could improve the design of GFS taxes in order to not arm financial inclusion and apply it to their specific country case studies. We can start with um, Dr. Combat on the Ghana case. The main recommendation from my side will be a further reduction in the rate. So currently, as you rightly said, Doc, it's one percent, but I'll recommend that I mean it is further reduced to maybe zero point five zero percent. And uh, I also want to recommend that the daily exemption be increased to three hundred instead of uh, the hundred uh, Ghana cities, and that will actually uh, uh, encourage people to uh, use the mobile money for their transactions. So this is the, these two recommendations are very, very, very important. And uh, the, the next thing will be to improve education and awareness of, of the tax. This is equally important. But there's one last important recommendation, if you permit me, and that is the non-capping of the transaction values is discouraging transfers and therefore I would recommend that uh, uh, the e-levy be capped at maybe 5,000. When I say cap, all what I'm saying is that the entire amount transferred is taxed at 1%. So what we are saying is that if you transfer up to 5,000, you can pay the 1%, but if you transfer beyond the 5,000, maybe the rate could be reduced. And that will be very, very good. Another recommendation that is in line with this is that currently the telecommunication companies, most of them are charging fee of 0.75%. Uh, so instead of us charging 1% as tax, we could also align it with their 0.75% so that it will be more acceptable. When we have lower rates, it will lead to recovery in the volumes and values of transactions. 
and then it can increase receipts in the medium to long term uh, of, of of Ghana's uh, uh, journey to mobilizing revenue. You can go to the Cameroon case. Uh, I will ask the same question to Ruth and, and Alphonse. Um, profitability um, is a strong determinant for getting in, staying in, and getting out of the mobile money business. We have established that the tax negatively affects agents' profits. Moreover, agents also face other challenges in their operations, such as fraud and scams, network outages, security concerns, and liquidity management issues that have a negative impact on the attractiveness of the mobile money activity and on financial inclusion. Overall, we offer the two following recommendations. So first, revenues generated from the mobile money tax could be used in strengthening fraud and scam recourse mechanisms. And second, increasing transparency on how these tax revenues are utilized is crucial in appeasing concerns some about the tax. Um, to add uh, to what my colleague said, uh, one of the key priority for growing mobile money business in Cameroon is improving agents' financial education. Uh, in our survey, um, we, we observed that 54% uh, of uh, agents do not have a bank account with financial institution, making them vulnerable to theft due to cash uh, handling. We also observed that um, many agents do not um, maintain any daily accounting record. So based on that, um, it seems crucial for uh, future growth in the, mobile, in the mobile money business in Cameroon uh, to improve agents' financial literacy by providing them uh, with tools to how to manage uh, their liquidity effectively and also how to manage uh, uh, micro enterprises, for instance. Uh, Regina, could you give us uh, policy recommendations that would make the Uganda tax less harmful for financial inclusion? The first position would be to drop the tax. <laughs> but that might be hard. Um, however, with the 0.5% that is collected on the withdrawals, we believe that it can be ring faced And I, I know Ruth has alluded to that indirectly. Once citizens know where their money is going, you know, and they effectively engage in the process, they are part of the process, they can easily accept uh, the tax that has been uh, proposed at the end of the day. We want to see more effective accountability on how that money that has been ring faced is being used, right? We want to see that government before passing these taxes, you know, before proposing them, they come up with every evidence based. First of all, the evidence, you know, um, the impact of the taxes before they are proposed. If after they pass, what is the what is the impact on the citizens, you know, and they can even rethink them and come up with more proposals. But also we need to look at the region, we're in the ESC region. I think both is in Kenya, right? We have colleagues from Tanzania. How are they, you know, coming up with the proposals, tax proposals at the end of the day? But most important, in line with the theme of the financial inclusion. We need to see that uh, we catch up with the pace uh, of the change. Uh, so we are at the end of our session. Uh, thank you uh, to our four panelists for interesting insights from on GFS taxation in Africa from three different and very interesting case studies. I hope that you enjoyed the session. Share your thoughts and questions uh, with us. And for more information on the subject, follow the work of the Digital Tax Program. Thank you very much. Thank you.